Hi, this is the video log for the 23rd and the 24th of February. Um, shorter video log compared with every one that I've been doing recently, but my video logs um, seem to be going well. Um, my the one previous to this looking at um, various interesting archaeological objects um, around the world seems to um, sort of hit a chord because people like sort of out of place archaeology things that are unusual um, the sort of wonderful um, uh, island of um, Antikythera uh, mechanism which was a computer dating back to um, 1100 years BC and beyond um, and various other out of place um, archaeological objects such as a Baghdad battery so this week um, I'm um, with that being successful not just as a video log but when I'm teaching it um, this week I've, I've been teaching something completely different um, but it's very similar as well it's looking at looted archaeological objects around the world which is a very very topical subject when you think about it with um, with the wars going on uh, in Libya naturally caused by the West um, wars going on in Syria and Iraq caused by the West as well and we're seeing that um, these organizations in the country that are causing the insurrection uh, wanting independence and forming new states and all the rest of it problems in Egypt and Nigeria and so on I um, mean even like the Ukraine artifacts are being looted from museums and archaeological sites and then sold off to make money for for the wars um, so we've caused the wars in the West um, Tony Blair being the mass murderer in um, um, in Iraq and Syria and we're finding that the artifacts um, that are being going on to the international art market in the West are being bought by Westerners so not only have we caused these wars we complain about these organizations looting archaeological sites when in fact we in the West are actually supporting the trade in these looted artifacts by buying them in the first place so that's what that's what the lectures are about this week and um, Yes, yeah, so I've had a few visitors this week. Uh, David dropped over, um, and a couple of um, other conversations about varying different things. Been really busy on Tuesday, and actually with the teaching in the e um, evening by Skype on Monday. Um, the um, the the archaeology workshop I go to. I've been starting to deliver some leaflets about the um, acting class. Um, you know that I do on a Wednesday evening. I teach on a Wednesday. That's good. And um, and just one thing that uh, oh yes um, we've uh, we've seen um, this week the birth of um, my my niece Lauren um, new baby and uh, it's a girl and she looks like Lauren and uh, Chris I've known him for some sometime as well and he's a great friend of the family and he's uh, known to my archaeology company students because he takes us um, he, he's the driver and he takes he's taken us to various different places around the country and he's a great dri driver great great couple um, and well done on your new child so that's a new addition to the family um, that I belong to so well done my niece and Chris and uh, finally, just um, just one thing I've been thinking of the past few days um, quickly um, is that um, it's pulled out from a conversation I had with somebody a little um, well, I, I think either on Monday or a day day or so before um, that somebody was saying, look, you know, we're we're never going to solve the problem of the earth. Things are getting worse and worse. You know, we're we're tapping into the, the resources of this planet too much. And the uh, same conversation was that we've there is more trapped um, in our rubbish tips than we're actually mining and creating um, for new products today. And it's true. And um, thought that came to me um, you know I was involved in politics um, I was a member of a, a national party's executive and I stood for parliament and stuff and one thing that I was actually thinking of I'm not involved in politics now but if I was I'd be one of these campaigners that would ask wait for it for the nationalization of rubbish um, to save on fuel costs to save on sorting to save on everything all the rubbish would just be placed outside our houses um, not in big plastic bins but back into the old uh, rubbish bags or whatever bags that people have got place into rubbish tips 
uh, rubbish tips, that's what I'm against. Um, rubbish vans, and then they would be taken to a central processing or, um, area that all the metals, all the plastics can be taken out, all the papers, like it uh, happens in some European countries, and that would be all be sorted, graded. It'd be, it wouldn't be, the, the local councils would not be involved, there wouldn't be any private companies, it would be complete nationalisation, um, and then the government could make profit from our rubbish, and it would all be sorted end of landfills it would be a national industry but unfortunately this is Britain we still throw we just go down the streets I see it today people just throw stuff into the rubbish people put stuff in bin bags outside their houses and some houses have 10 bin bags a week some people do some people um, just um, I just don't get it um, recycling doesn't work. Uh, recycling clearly doesn't work. Local authorities still put the recycled rubbish in landfill anyway. So it doesn't work. Anyway, any ideas on that? Get back to me. Thanks for watching my video log today. Thank you.